Hello and welcome to Let's Play Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. This game was released in 1992 by LucasArts Entertainment, just a little while after the release of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, both the movie and the game, and is actually a sequel to that first game. It is generally considered to be a perennial favorite among many 90s adventure game enthusiasts, however I did not discover it until last year when a friend of mine gifted it to me on Steam. However, I thoroughly enjoyed it and have been very excited to Let's Play it ever since. So without further ado, let us get started. Alright Jones, how are you going to find that statue and all this junk? Alright, so we play as Indiana Jones, and we can move around by clicking on where we want to go and what we want to look at. And apparently we're supposed to be looking for some sort of statue here in this mysterious temple thing, or wherever this place is. Let's uh, start right here with this one. It's a stone carving of Shiva. Okay, apparently that's not the one we need. It's some kind of funeral urn. What about this one? It's a copy of an Egyptian statue of Horus. All right, so that's not a genuine artifact. It's a medieval gargoyle, or a good imitation. Well, imitation or not, it still looks pretty imposing. Nothing here in the foreground that we can see. What about this statue? Poor Marcus. He thought this was a Maasai warrior. I see Marcus is still being silly old Marcus. What about this one? This one is a peculiar one for some reason. Whoa! Oof. Ouch. Well, it doesn't seem like we're in any sort of temple at all. It looks like we're in some kind of storage room. wonder where we are. Wherever it is, there's a big hole on the ground with a rope that seems to extend into it. But we'll see what's in this room first. The label says, Unidentified Potsherds. Hmm, well that's not it. Looks like beadwork from the Phoenix Collection. That's not it either. Looks like textiles from the Shamit collection. Marcus thought Potlatch Indians carved this. Looks like a movie prop to me. I think Barnett College needs to reconsider their hiring practices. Looks dangerous. Well, in that case, let's use the rope to get down there. Oh! Ah! And it looks like we're in some sort of library, which probably means that we are indeed at Barnett College itself. That's good, at least we're not out and about in some super dangerous place. Although if Indy is performing like this right now, that doesn't give me much hope for the rest of the game. I don't need them, they're just textbooks. I think I've read them all. You've probably lived them all too. It's an old lecture hall desk. Weapons. There's nothing of importance here. Dig sites? There's nothing of importance here. What about this one? Statues! Okay, that looks promising. Maybe this will help us. These books don't look familiar. Uh oh. Oh! My goodness. We're just really taking a beating here at the beginning of the game, aren't we? Seems like every fall just keeps getting worse. Well, it seems like there's quite a few statues in this room. Maybe one of them's the one we're looking for. Let's take a look. Roof checked. I think you'll need your head checked, too. Looks pretty slippery. Yeah, we wouldn't want to fall down there, right? Possibly an ancient Mesopotamian cat god. Ow! Oh! Whoa. And what do you know, we did fall down. Well, that didn't look quite as painful as the other ones. But I sincerely hope this is the bottom, because we are in the furnace room. Hopefully there will be no more falling. Alright, let's have a look around. It's hot. Well, at least it's working. 
It's too slippery to walk up. Yeah, I don't think I want to go back up there again. It's too slippery to walk up. A fine sample of bitumen. Bitumen. It's a greasy old towel. Let's see if the statue's any of these lockers. You never know. I'll be. Aha! Here's what I've been searching for. It is in here. Strange looking thing. I wonder where Marcus picked it up. I wonder what he wants with it. Well, let's go ahead and head out. I gotta admit, I really like this style of graphics a lot, this VGA style. It's it's really nice. Who's that guy? I'm back. Indy? You don't look at all well, Dr. Jones. Exploring our collections can be dangerous, Mr. Uh, what was your name again? Smith. Hmm. Tell me, did you find a lock to match my key? You bet I did. Take a look. What are you waiting for? Let's open it. Why not? It's an obvious fake. You may think so, Doctor, but I believe we are opening a new chapter in history. Oh? My word, India, small metal bead. Jewelry, perhaps? Uh-oh. I still think it's a fake. Uh-oh. You won't mind if I take it. Really, Mr. Smith. Stand back, gentlemen. I hope you've got a getaway car waiting. You'll need one. Hmm. What is Fritz? He's a Nazi! He got away. But we got his coat, Marcus. Hey, what's this? Klaus Kerner, huh? Good lord, Indy. The man's some sort of agent from the Third Reich. <laughs> yeah, the accent totally did not make that obvious. I want the Buddhist statue. <sighs> I lied, Marcus. I don't think it's a pony. I can't place the style, but it's old. Look what else our friend was carrying. An old copy of National Archaeology. And there you are in Iceland. Hmm. Yeah, field supervisor for the Jastro expedition. My first real job. Who's the woman? Sophia Hapgood. She was my assistant. A spoiled rich kid from Boston, rebelling against her family. But where is she now? She gave up archaeology to become a psychic. Hmm. How odd. You can say that again. Indeed. Indy, Kerner found you. What if he finds her? We should warn the woman. You're right. I want to know more about that statue. Me too. You know, Marcus, the coldest year of my life was the one I spent in Iceland with Sophia. Something tells me she had something to do with that. And we're heading off to New York City. I guess this is where Sophia is. And it seems like she's performing at this theater here. Now, at this point in the game, we're introduced to the interface, which is uh, quite a bit different than what we were using in the introduction, which was trimmed down. Instead of the dialogue appearing on the screen whenever you mouse over something you can look at, that now appears down here in this section. Now, you can interact with various objects uh, in the game in different ways. You can give them uh, to people and only to people. Um, if you want to do that with another object or with another item on the screen, you can use an object on something. You can pick one up in order to add it to your inventory, open or close it if it's a door or box or something with hinges. You can talk to people um, or animals in one particular case. You can push or pull objects or just look at them if you want to know what India has to say about them. Now, what's really nice about this game is that the game actually gives you a recommended option 
depending on what the object is. So for instance, the ticket taker here at this window is someone that we're supposed to talk to. We can't pick up the ticket taker. Well, I guess Indy doesn't try that, but at any rate, if you try to do things that you normally can't do, then Indy typically says something. I guess he doesn't do it here for some reason. Uh, but you normally want to go with whatever option is highlighted in yellow. In this case, talk to. Hello there. The show sold out, sir. But I want to go in and see Sophia. But no seats, no standing room, no exception. Aw, that's a bummer. Let's see, well one thing that you can do that really speeds up uh, stuff here in this game is that if you have a highlighted option like this, you can just right click on the object and it will automatically do that for you. The doors are locked, sir. Or at least in this case it will try to do it for you. This is something that I did not discover until I was pretty far along into my first playthrough, which was very annoying because I kept doing this and this over and over again, so I'm very glad I discovered, although a bit miffed that I did so late into the game. Let's take a look at the newspaper. It's today's paper. Now you'll notice here that although look at is the highlighted option, um, it's not the only thing that we can actually do. We can pick up the paper as well. So yeah, the game won't always tell you which things you can do to a certain item. Sometimes you do have to figure that out for yourself. In fact, quite a bit of the time you have to do that. Um, we're not going to use the taxi yet. Doing so will just return us back to the map and back to Barnett College. But we're, we don't want to go there quite yet. Let's see if we can use the phone booth. I can't make a call. I'm out of nickels. Come on, Indy, don't you know that you're supposed to take your nickels everywhere you go? Imagine the suckers who actually pay to see Sophia's Lost World lectures. Well, I don't know, Lost World sounds like something Indy might be interested in. Although, maybe he wouldn't be necessarily interested in how Sophia approaches it. Well, there's a back door here, this might be promising. Hmm, it's unlocked. That's a good sign. Uh oh. What do you want, pal? This ain't no ticket office. Now we got a bouncer here, and we are faced with uh, what is essentially our first real choice in this game. Although it looks like this is a situation in which none of these options would really get you anywhere, this actually does have a bearing on something else later on in the game. Well, let me explain. Um, some of you who have played the game might already know this, but uh, this game are actually offers three distinct paths through the midsection of the game before they all converge at the very end. And um, what option you pick here um, has a bearing on which path you're recommended when you get to that uh, point in the game. Now, there are three different paths. There are the Fist's Path, the Wits Path, and the Team Path. The Fist's Path mostly consists of fighting, which is kind of a bit annoying, to be honest. Um, the Wits Path is mostly puzzle solving, and the Team Path involves working with Sophia. Now, the very end of the game involves a combination of all three, but how you get there is quite a different experience depending on what you pick. Now, in this particular case, we can pick only one option uh, as the solution to get inside the theater, but I'm going to pick the wits path in this case. I'm the fire inspector. What do you take me for, a moron? You can try to try other uh, ruses on him, but uh, I'm not going to do that. Wait a minute. Oh, wait. Yeah, what? <laughs> I picked the wrong option there. I'm the fire inspector. What do you take me for, a moron? Yeah, I totally forgot to just pick this. Good night. Same to you. Okay, well, There's let's... There's some way to talk my way in. And there actually is. If you tried to talk about Sophia and butter her up, then that could have worked. But uh, I want to look around here. Um, talking about Sophia would have uh, recommended the team path for you, whereas uh, intimidating him and... Uh, all that would have uh, recommended the Fist's Path. But right here, it looks like there's another way inside through this fire escape. 
Let's see if we can get there via moving these crates around. It's a crate. Let's try pushing it out of the way. Same thing for that one. But uh, now we got this one in the way now. Let's move it back to its original spot. And the same thing goes for this one. There we go. We made it! Hey! You must be the new doorman. About time they got rid of Biff. He was such a pushover. Was uh, Biff the guy that we were just talking to? I need to talk to that so-called psychic. It's Madame Sophia to us employees, fella. Hmm, well it seems like he's not going to be of any help. Let's see if we can talk to Sophia, even though she's on stage giving a lecture to a bunch of people. Hold on! You can't go out there! Take it easy and watch the show! Here, my friends, is Atlantis. As it might have appeared in its heyday. Ooh. Glorious, prosperous, socially and technically advanced. Beyond our wildest dreams. Sure looks pretty spiffy. 5,000 years ago, while everyone else still wore animal skins, the mighty spirits of Atlantis dared to build a city where knowledge and power were united in true happiness. Centuries later, the famous philosopher Plato wrote about it. He placed Atlantis on a continent out in the deep ocean and described how it was divided into three circular parts, such as you see here. Isn't she something? She can go on for hours. But I don't want her to go on for hours. I want to talk to her, warn her about this Kerner guy. Hey, she's just coming to the exciting part. What befell the serene city? We may never know for sure. Was it the sea level slowly creeping higher, or the earth itself suddenly shifting? However it happened, panic must have gripped the citizens. On that fateful day when proud Atlantis sank beneath the waves. Or, perhaps it was a volcanic eruption, and something remains even now. On some questions, the great spirit who guides my thoughts, the all-seeing Nurab Sal, is silent. Nurab Sal? I've been through this a hundred times. The woman never stops. Who's Nurab Sal? Can we talk to her again? Hey! She's still talking. Okay, apparently we're done with all the cutscenes with her talking, at least for now. But we'll have to find a way to get her attention in the next video.